Oh, hello, hello, folks. Tom Lawson here. Um, hang on, I need, need me water. Got a terrible hangover, um, which is one of the things that happens when you uh, drink heavily. I don't recommend it. Oh dear. Right. Um. So yeah. So this is Christmas. <sighs> what have we done? Um. Mmm, delicious. Buxton. Fabulous. Um, yeah, so, uh, yes, I'm going to do the um, my top ten albums of the year after the first thrilling instalment. Um, obviously, it's completely, the whole exercise is totally redundant because uh, it's printed in the magazine. In uh, Mount Hammer, which is there, you see my list now. But anyway, I'll do it anyway because it's a laugh, isn't it? Possibly. Um, so, yeah, number ten. Number ten, folks. You see how hungover I am? I look really old. Actually, I'm old. So. Doesn't really mean anything. Uh, number ten, Orange Goblin, a eulogy for the damned. Now, um, I don't think there's ever been a more deserving um, kind of uh, flurry of plaudits and applause uh, than for when they released this album earlier in the year. Um, Orange Goblin, one of the great British heavy metal bands of of whatever, well, really, certainly the last twenty years, and uh, they've been threatening to make an album this good all the while. And I think all their albums stand up perfectly well. And uh, Full of you know, full of gems, full of great riffs and great songs. But um, but this one is just you know far and away the the best thing they've ever done, um, and I think that's reflected in the reaction. Really, um, I mean it's number three in Metal Hammer's uh, overall critics' choice of the year poll list poll chart thing, um, and that's brilliant. You know, and uh, it's fucking awesome to see so many people being nice about um, about a band that have worked really hard and and stuck to their guns and uh, not gone awful you know <laughs> just just a brilliant band really orange goblin and I don't, you know I don't, uh, there are, are other british bands that kind of peddle a kind of old school heavy metal or um you know rock and roll kind of vibe who get a lot who've had a lot more hype um in recent times i'm thinking of one band in particular they're all right <laughs> but um excuse me but orange goblin are the best we have doing that really and i think they're um I think Eulogy for the Dam just contains everything that's great about that band and a whole load of new stuff as well. And I think what's what's often overlooked about them is how diverse their sound is. You know, they they kind of got labelled a stone rock band or a you know heavy metal band or whatever, and, and that and they are both those things. But but there's a a real mixture of influences hidden within what they do, and um, you know, so you can you can get vibes of everything from Fu Manchu to uh, to Motorhead to Bathory. You know, it's all on there. Um, and they do it brilliantly, and it all sounds like them. I think Ben Ward's a very un underrated vocalist as well, and I think he excels himself on this. You know, he's got such a unique voice. Anyway, so that's my number ten. I'm just, I'm just waffling now. It's rubbish. Uh, don't know, honestly, don't know why you're still watching. Um, number number nine. Uh, no one else picked this in their list in the magazine at all, which I find really bizarre because I think it's a fucking brilliant record. It's Ahab, um, German nautical doom band Ahab, and their uh, fabulous album The Giant. Um, now, if you like, I mean, if you like, you know, crushing doom records, then this is going to be for you. But also, if you like things like Opeth and um, Swallow the Sun and things like that, you know, it's really melodic but incredibly heavy. Uh, it's just got some absolutely beautiful moments on it, and and I think it's you know, people who think that slow music is boring are obviously stupid anyway because it isn't, or at least it doesn't need to be. Um, but th this is an album that. Um, you know that kind of transcends the, the the genre it's in really because it's it's quite it's got a real magical feel to it so I recommend that very highly um, and all the songs are about about watery demises and and you know leviathans rising from the depths and all that kind of caper which is lovely uh, number eight and it goes to t this goes to show what a fucking brilliant year it is my number eight album of the year is Ginger Wildheart our Lord and Saviour Ginger Wildhearts. Um, 100%. I mean, actually, well, what I put in my list when I submitted it was 555% because I know there is the, the single album, um, 100%, which is fantastic, obviously. But um, I think if you missed out on the on the triple album thing, then you really need to check that out because um, there's so many things that obviously aren't on the on the single album thing that you'll miss out on. And it's it's just a towering body of work, you know, um, for somebody to come up with 30 songs, all of which are good, there's no filler. It's, um, it's just... Uh, a testament to what, what a fantastic songwriter Ginger is, you know, and, and how ridiculously um, consistent he is and how he his passion for what he does shines through in everything he does, you know, because he, um, you know, he's not putting any out substandard products and, and he's 
relentlessly doing stuff. I mean, the mutation stuff that I, I play bass on some of it um, is fucking mental, and extreme metal fans in particular, I think, are really going to dig that. Um, and then there's the Hey Hello album, which just came out, which is also absolutely amazing. Um, it's just he's sickening, really. I mean, I, if he's if you're watching this, Ginger, could you fucking stop you making the rest of us look like cunts? Frankly, um, have six months off, mate. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Ginger Wild Heart, 555%, absolutely amazing record. Number seven uh, is Devin Townsend Project, Epic Loud. Um, I feel like just shamelessly name dropping now because I appeared on stage doing Planet Smasher with um, Devin Townsend Project at, at the Roundhouse, looking like a total burk. Um, but it's just a, I don't know, it's just a phenomenal album. Devin's another one of those people that just keeps churning out amazing records, and it's not, you know, a, a new one comes out, and you don't think, oh, I wonder if this will be any good or not. You just kind of know it's going to be amazing. And Epic Cloud, I think, he's kind of excelled himself really on that. I think it's one of the best things he's ever done, if not the best. And um, it's just rammed full of amazing tunes. If you haven't heard it, then I don't really know what you're you're playing at, to be honest. Um, but there you go, Devin Townsend Project. Epic Cloud featuring the lovely Annika van Giersbergen. Um, number six, now this is an album that, um, again, it, it's anathema, right? Weather Systems. Now, this is tops lots of lists and, and just, you know, um, is obviously one of the big albums of the year, really. I mean, even even the other magazine have, have noticed it, which makes a change. Um, but yeah, it's a fucking brilliant album, just in every way. But what it just reminds me, I've got a beam up on it about this, about Anathema. Um, they've got so many amazing songs, beautiful, brilliant songs, that really are incredibly accessible and have the potential to to delight a massive audience, you know. When you think about all the people that like U2, I mean, I'm not comparing Anathema to U2 or Coldplay, but the amount of people that like that sort of thing, Keen and all those kind of bands, that kind of, you know, very melodic and poppy and, and mellow, kind of stuff um i think if all those people you know wanted something with a bit more substance to it i think anathema of the band really and you know songs like dreaming light from them from we're here because we're here and things like that it's just why they don't get played on the radio well i mean probably because the people who run radio want a pillocks you know but um but yeah why you know why is six music not playing anathema you know why it just doesn't make any sense to me at all you know obviously Huge, huge potential, you know, if people actually got to hear the damn thing. But there you go. Anyway, we know that it's brilliant, don't we? So there you are. Um, number five, my number five is My Dying Bride, a map of all our failures. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm biased exactly, but I'm a total My Dying Bride fanboy. I think they're one of the most, my favourite bands of all time. And um, everything they put out just... You know, they just have this ability to give me shivers down the spine every time. And this is, I think, one of their strongest albums. It's one of their bleakest albums as well. Fuck me. It's de- and when I say it's depressing, I find listening to them quite uplifting, really. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty fucking bleak. And um, you know, and they've excelled themselves again, like like with Devin. Really, they've you know, they're a band that I expect great things from, and they've come up with something particularly good. You know, and it, if you've never really listened to My Dying Bride before, then it's as good a po- uh, starting point as any, really. Um, I love the title, like a map of all our failures. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, uh, number four is actually the uh, Metal Hammer's number one, which was Gojira, L'Enfant Sauvage, um, The Wild Child. I think that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, The Elephant Sausage. Um, yeah, it's just a fucking hour. If you don't like Gojira and you call yourself a metal fan, then really, what are you playing at again? It's um, a fantastic band, just became more fantastic. That's all you need to know, really, about that. It's just, I mean, my gig of the year definitely was Gujira at the uh, Islington Academy, and I just, there's just something about them. They've got real momentum behind them now, and they're, they're one of the few metal bands that get a lot of attention from the press and stuff that are actually doing something new, and they're genuinely unique. You know, they don't sound like anybody else. They're not following some pathetic bandwagon. They're not, um, you know, they're not just re- repeating a formula endlessly. They're genuinely inventive and have a unique sound that, that only they um, can, can, um, can do. A sound you can do that doesn't make sense. Fucking hell, it's hangover. Honestly, I need some more of this magical Buxton. Um, there you go. My number three again, uh, this th- th- it might surprise people, don't care if it does or not, probably doesn't, don't even know why I mentioned it. But uh, my number three is Wolf Spain, Wolf Spain Save the World. Now, it, it actually kind of came out last year, but um, got an official release in January, so I, I'm included in it. Uh, in this year's releases, and uh, if you want to know what I think about that album, then go. Back. There's an Iron Sandwich about the Wolfsbane album, and I get almost tearful about how brilliant it is, and what a fucking amazing band they are. And there is a there's a there's a t- touch of nostalgia in it for me because they were one of my favourite bands 20 years ago, you know. And 
and I, I love them, you know, so much just as a band, you know, and, and um, I've had more fun at Wolfsbane gigs than probably any other band, you know, but um, this is, is a phenomenal comeback record and it's just full of great songs and uh, Blaze sings his, his little socks off and uh, yeah, it's just amazing, yeah. Uh, my number two, uh, probably not, again, not much of a surprise to anybody that my number two is Isham. Eremita. Um the man's a genius basically, um and, and that's it, that's all there is to it. Um and this album just kind of reinforces what a genius he is. It's just in, uh, just a, an amazingly imaginative and clever and and um and you know, I hate to use the word mature, but it's just a real it's kind of a mature record, you know, because it's got it's so well conceived and, and brilliantly executed and the production's amazing and, and he does so many interesting things with extreme metal that other people just wouldn't think to do, you know. Everything from I mean there's the track with uh, what's it called Introspection, the track that's got Devin singing on it, which is a really beautiful song. And then there's like a ten minute horrible, grotesque doom thing called The Grave, which is just one of the most horrible creepy things I've ever heard and uh, and it's fucking awesome so yeah check out Isham if I buy everything he's ever done because he's, like I say he's a genius um, and then we get to my number one of the year which um, is The Seer by Swans now um, I, <sighs> Swans one of my favourite bands of all time again um, just when they when they reformed a few years back and put out um, the, the the last album the title of which is Case My Father Will Guide me up a rope to the sky, is it called? Something like that. Um, it was great. It was Swans. It was uh, a new kind of Swansea thing, but um, it wasn't uh, as phenomenal, say, as, as the classics from the old days like Carp and the Great Annihilator and um, other albums they did that were great. Like, honestly, I'm brains fucked. Um, but The Seer was, it's just a phenomenal piece of work. It's two hours long. It's, it kind of brilliantly encapsulates everything that was great about the original era of Swans but it's totally fresh and new as well and it's got everything from like really kind of gentle slightly ethereal um, folk songs on it right through to the title track which is 32 minutes of barbaric noise and drones and, and heaviness and it's just phenomenal and I think it, I mean it was already my album of the year but seeing them play at Coco in Camden recently just kind of reaffirmed what an astonishing band they are and what an, what an amazing talent Michael Gearer is you know there's just it's just, yeah, there's something about it. It'll either move you or it, or it won't. You know, it's, the Swans are not for everybody. You know, I think if you've got a short attention span, it's probably not for you. Um, you know, if uh, your idea of fun is listening to Bullet For My Valentine, then chances are you've got awful taste in music. But also you probably won't like Swans. Um, but, you know, for those of us that uh, that like to lose ourselves in, in music and, and kind of appreciate atmosphere, I suppose, and... and um, intensity and, and, and imagination in music. I think the Swans are just, you know, one of the most phenomenal things around. Um, and they continue to inspire, you know, so many people. The audience at their gig was so diverse, you know, everybody, everything from hipsters to black metal fans were there, you know, and um, a very peculiar audience, actually, to tell you the truth. Uh, I was there, which didn't help. Um, so there you go, Swans, my album of the year, The Seer. Woo, go Dom. You've picked something that most people won't like for your album of the year. That's brilliant. Anyway, it's Christmas. I'm hungover. Um, I don't know when this is going out. So if you've, if Christmas is finished, then nah. um, and uh, sorry about that. But I hope you had a good one. Uh, if if this goes out on Christmas Day, which you probably won't, um, then I hope you have a good one. And uh, if this goes out three days ago before I did it, then I'm very confused. Um, so yeah, cheers, folks. That was uh, moderately interesting, wasn't it? Um, not really, Dom. Um, so yeah, there you go. Cheers. See you in the new year with lots more iron sandwiches. Yeah, brilliant. Maybe. Um, yeah, look, there's a, there's a point there. It's a snowman. It's Christmas. Fuck off, Jonah Louie.